Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. Glary's got some new body styles going on, so they asked me to take a look at this one. So let's go ahead and unbox it. <laughs> All right, guys, they are now selling miniature guitars for your kids. This, this ought to be interesting. But you know, first impressions, this thing's ridiculously lightweight. It weighs almost nothing. We've got a beautiful blue finish. As always, we've got some dust and whatnot on this thing, but it's a decent looking little starter pack thing here. If you choose to purchase one of these things, uh, you can choose your different colors of guitars. I'll throw them up here on the screen. You get a starter cable here. Looks like we get a strap and a pick. You get a little gig bag, which that's pretty nice because nothing else will fit these guitars. Oh, that's really nice. They give you an extra set of strings as well. And another one of Glary's little practice amps. We have the return of the drive channel. So let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench and take a look at its parts and how it was built. All right, so here's what we've got. You've just got a bridge bolted directly to the body. It's not a tremolo or anything. You just kind of have these saddles that you can adjust up and down. Something I did notice about these is they rattle like crazy. So I would actually suggest putting like a small piece of foam underneath those screws because that seems to be where that sound comes from. If you're curious what that's for, I think that just grounds the bridge in general. It's just secured by five screws, as you can see right here. We have just one single coil pickup in this one. It looks pretty well similar to what's on all the other Glary guitars, but I'm sure it'd be fairly easy to route that out for a humbucker as well. This is what it looks like without the pickup cover on. I'll take a quick look at that cover as well. It appears we have just a single volume control, so very simple guitar to demo today. I really dig this blue finish on the basswood body. That's what this is made out of. And we have our tried and true pair of a maple fretboard with a maple neck. Now, I'm really excited to kind of get to experience a glary maple fretboard because I've always been curious about these, but they always send me the uh, rosewood versions. This does not have a thick finish on it. It's like the exact same thing as the neck. It almost feels like there's nothing on it at all. They just have a very thin coat. But something I will kind of knock them on for a little bit here is the finish is not even. You can kind of feel some bumps. Do you see those bumps right there? I'm not sure if like a light sanding would take those out. So I think I'll go ahead and try that right now with some steel wool. So after doing that, I would say it helped. I can't quite feel them as much, but it's still definitely there. Something else I want to point out is there appears to be a defect in my fretboard right here. Like this area of wood almost seems like it's slightly lower than the rest. It at least has a much rougher feel. This one features the typical glary looking headstock. It's kind of strat like in shape. These things change from example to example it seems. They're getting further and further away from the original fender design, which I personally think is a good thing. But I will say this glary water slide decal, it doesn't look like it was applied correctly. You see it kind of has like a haze around it, like maybe it slid a little bit. We have a 1.63 inch nut width which increases to 1.99 at the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.87, which stays fairly consistent at 0.93 at the 12th. Scale length wise, it looks like we're almost about 20 and a half. And the pickup seems to have a reading of 5.92K ohms. As far as the back side of the instrument, you just have a circular control cavity right here, where you just have a single pot going on in there. The neck, as we kind of talked about before, it has that smooth feeling to it. I don't necessarily see any defects right here as far as manufacturer flaws. And you've got this style of tuner. The guitar is pretty neck heavy, so I have to stand it up right here. So it's about three pounds. So now that we know the specs, let's go ahead and plug it into the provided amp as well as run it through my Mesa Boogie.
Now that we know how this instrument sounds, let's go ahead and talk about it. Through the stock amp, it sounded pretty good clean. I thought it was all right, but as soon as you hit that distorted channel, it, it did not sound very pleasing to my ears. Something else I noticed is the amp is very quiet, even cranked to the max on the clean channel. It doesn't fill the room with sound. The distorted channel doesn't have that problem though. Through my Mesa Boogie amp, I thought it sounded pretty good, but the single coil is rather noisy with distortion. I thought it was fun to play this thing, but not necessarily a serious instrument. It's got this really chunky neck profile. I know the dimensions didn't make it seem chunky, but as always, Glary has these big necks, which is great for adults, but I'm wondering if kids will have issues playing these. Glary is offering these at $83.99 shipped with everything you saw before. You get a strap, you get an amp, you get all of that, whereas the next leading competitor for these would be the Squire Mini Strat, which sells new, just the guitar, for $129.99. So while these are a lot cheaper, I think Glary's going to have a hard time breaking into the market because Glary just isn't a name brand that everybody knows. I think somebody looking for a cheap little instrument for their beginner is probably gonna go for the name brand Squire over this. Now, is this guitar necessarily any better or worse than the other mini guitars I've had? Not necessarily. All mini guitars have the same issue. You need to use ridiculously heavy gauge, like 13 or 14 gauge strings to even keep them in tune. So tuning stability, not the best on this thing, but feel free to check out my series on this Epiphone Mini Les Paul that I just kind of decked out with tons of vintage parts to try to make it better. So here's some additional thoughts as to what you could upgrade this guitar with to make it better and just some knowledge to know for Glary how they could improve this product. Definitely ship these things with higher gauge strings as I was just talking about. It will definitely help with tuning stability. I really believe it should be part of the listing that these cannot be tuned to regular EAD GBE because it's not going to stay in tune at all if you do that. For best results, tune G to G. At that point, you have a fighting chance to keep it in tune, but this one, it kept always coming back flat. The next thing to always know about these things is the intonation. It's just really hard to get them spot on. Once I'm all the way at the 12th fret, it's, it's pretty much a half step above what it should be. So definitely keep in mind that you might have to get this professionally intonated, but the heavier gauge strings also kind of help with that. I also noticed some discrepancies in specs between what I actually received versus what was advertised that I'd like to go over. These were advertised as a 21 fret instrument. You get a bonus, it's actually a 22 fret. So yeah, that's okay. But the biggest thing that Glare, you guys need to fix this right away. They're saying this is a tremolo bridge and I was really excited for that because most mini guitars, they don't have that on them, but this is a set bridge. It's just drilled into the top. It's string through the bridge. So that was a little bit of a downer, especially when they say, have a bunch of fun with the trem bar. <laughs> and the last thing I noticed is they said it was a 25 and a half inch scale. That's, you know, your standard full size instrument. This one, as we learned earlier, it's about 20 and a half inches. So I had fun fooling around with this thing, but I can't necessarily put my seal of approval on these. But then again, I don't really advocate these mini guitars anyways, if you're looking for something serious. The only mini guitar I've ever had that I felt was gig worthy was the Lotus Mini Les Paul, cause it still had all your controls. It had two pickups, a bridge and a tailpiece. I would love to see Glary make something like this available to the market today. These are pretty good if you want to give them to your child just to inspire them to learn, but they will quickly need something a little bit of a higher caliber. So at that point, then maybe you can just upgrade to a full-sized Glary. And that's exactly what I'll be doing for this one. I'm going to go give it to my kids so they can just have fun beating it up and hopefully inspiring them to play. 
I hope you troglodytes enjoyed getting to look at Glary's new 30 inch kids electric guitar starter package. If you still want to order one, I'll put a link in the description to their stuff. But if not, hey, we'll still see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.